Hello my friends, it's me Joey P, Joe P Zapia, and it's time to hit the waiver wire. It's week two in Major League Baseball. Here are the names you need to add to your teams to be successful in week three and possibly beyond. Before we get to those names, I want to give you a chance to elevate your victory to legendary status this year in fantasy baseball with the Trophy Smack 36-inch Fantasy Baseball Championship Trophy. This isn't just a trophy. It's a towering symbol of your fantasy baseball dominance, and you can win it for a chance to win... All you got to do is subscribe to the Fantasy Pros MLB YouTube channel and leave a comment on any video like this one, perhaps. And that's your ticket to claiming this extraordinary symbol of fantasy baseball supremacy. So stay in the loop and turn on those notifications for our latest updates. And don't miss out on the exclusive chance to elevate your victory and get this trophy. All right, without further ado, here are the names on my list for week two to add to your fantasy baseball teams. All right, let's kick things off here in Kansas City with starting pitcher Brady Singer rostered in roughly 50% of leagues. Now, why am I excited about adding a guy who had a 5-plus ERA last year? Well, it's because Brady Singer in his first start struck out 10 guys. Now, I know it's only one start, but all spring he was working on using the sweeper more. And if that pitch is coming to fruition for Brady Singer, we could see the best version of him yet. It's not that long ago that Brady Singer was a big-time pitching prospect in this organization. And if you go back to 2022, he had some pretty good success that year with a 3-2-3 ERA over 24 starts. Brady Singer is pitching for a Kansas City Royals team that I think is going to be much more competitive, perhaps more competitive than they've been in almost a decade. And I think Singer could be one of the sneaky guys in this rotation that you end up starting all year long. And hopefully he can give you at least 160 plus innings in 2024. If he does all of that and gets that ERA somewhere around the league average or even less, Brady Singer could be a surprise starter for you every single week in fantasy. So roster him now because you can never have enough starting pitching. Speaking of never having enough starting pitching, let's talk about Jordan Hicks of the San Francisco Giants, rostered in about 54% of leagues currently. Now, Jordan Hicks qualifies at RP and SP because he's a converted starter from a reliever. Jordan Hicks is a guy that can touch triple digits with that fastball. And yes, he probably will be limited at some point in his innings as he makes that transition. He might get some starts skipped in the middle of the season. You never know. It all depends on how competitive the Giants are. But one thing is for sure, Hicks has been incredibly impressive so far in 2024. In spring training, he had a 2.65 ERA with five starts, 17 innings pitch, and 28 strikeouts. And so far, his first bit of work in the 2024 regular season was almost as good with five scoreless innings and giving up just three hits and a walk striking out six in five frames. So as far as I'm concerned, Hicks is a guy that you add now and you ride through the next few months as the fifth starter on the San Francisco Giants. Then you can look to shop him somewhere around the end of June if things are still going well for Hicks. But one thing is for sure, so far, Hicks looks like a big addition to that San Francisco Giants rotation on a team that, again, is going to be pretty competitive in 2024. Continuing on with the theme of this waiver wire video, let's do some more pitchers, shall we? How about Garrett Whitlock? Again, another reliever slash starting pitcher for the Boston Red Sox, also rostered in about 53% of leagues. Garrett Whitlock this spring also was pretty darn good. 21 innings, 22 strikeouts, just three walks, and we have been teased by Garrett Whitlock before. At least I know I have. So why should we buy in now? Well, with Lucas Giolito on the shelf for the season, this guy's going to have a rotation spot locked in for the rest of the year. I think the Boston Red Sox can continue to be competitive, but at least in this early month of April, it's worth adding Whitlock to see if maybe, just maybe, this age 28 season is the difference maker where he starts to make that jump in terms of performance. The first start of the year for him, incredibly good. Eight strikeouts, zero walks, over five innings, that ERA sitting at 1.80. So add him now and continue to watch how he performs. Like Hicks, he's another guy too that innings will pile up and once he gets to around 100, it might be time to start shopping him around. But until then, take all the pitching you can get and Garrett Whitlock is another one of these arms that I wanna have on my bench. Next up on our list is Kevin Ginkle, relief pitcher of the Arizona Diamondbacks, rostered in 55% of leagues. So Kevin Ginkle took over the save duties for Paul Seawald while he's on the shelf, and although Seawald is working his way back, we don't know two things. Number one, exactly when Seawald will return, and number two, is Seawald just the guy automatically? 
probably the answer to that latter question is yes, but Ginkle might be a guy that, especially if you have Seawald, you want to have on your bench as well. Ginkle does have strikeout potential. He has shown already he is ready for that job if and when that job should present itself again to him to close out games for the Diamondbacks. But the biggest thing is this. Ginkle is a live arm, and in deeper leagues, he can get you some good peripheral stats. So at the end of the day, there's upside for saves. You don't know if Seawald has a re-injury or any performance issues when returning from injury. So for now, Ginkle is still a worthy add because, especially in head-to-head -head formats, you gotta get those saves whenever you can. And right now, Ginkle is the one getting them. Okay, okay, one more starting pitcher here before we get to some bats. It's Max Meyer, starting pitcher of the Miami Marlins, coming in at 41% rostered. Now, Max Meyer is a pitcher that I have had very high expectations for for quite some time. And unfortunately, injuries have really derailed him the last few years. However, he is healthy now and has a spot in this rotation. The innings will be limited to a certain degree. However, I do think you can see him get up to that 135, 140 mark this year. And that might be better than guys like Whitlock or guys like Hicks when all is said and done. So far in spring training, the guy had seven innings pitched, struck out five guys, walked just one, and gave up zero earned runs in his first start against the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Outside of a home run to Mike Trout, Max Meyer was pretty darn good. Four strikeouts, two walks, just two earned in that start. And again, he's got a rotation spot for the foreseeable future, especially with the way some other guys, <laughs> AJ Puck, are performing in that rotation. So Max Meyer, once upon a time, was one of the best pitching prospects in baseball. He still is. He's just post-hype sleeper. He's just been forgotten about. So don't forget about him when you're putting in your waiver claims for week two. Okay, okay, I promised you some bats, enough pitchers. Let's start with Oswaldo Cabrera, New York Yankees outfielder slash infielder, depending on your league eligibility rules. Again, rostered in roughly 50% of leagues. Now, Cabrera is not a world beater, even though he's gotten off a terrific start here, hitting 340 to start the season with 1,000 OPS. That's not him. He's a 260 hitter over his minor league career, but the thing with Cabrera is, is getting every day at bats, and with DJ LeMahieu on the shelf, and the Yankees hurting in some spots, it makes sense to have Cabrera around your lineup because there's opportunity for him to play, and the hot start is very good for him. Now, last year at 115 games with the Yankees, he hit just 211. He's a better player than that, but he's also not the guy hitting 340 right now. If he can get to you somewhere in that 270 range, he's got a little bit of pop. He can steal some bases for you, too. Cabrera might be a good stopgap guy for you, depending, again, on your eligibility rules, especially for those of you hurting at third base with all the injuries going on there early in 2024. And speaking of stopgaps at the hot corner, Royce Lewis is on the shelf. Josh Young is on the shelf. We need some third baseman. How about J.D. Davis, who qualifies there for the Oakland A's, rostered in about 25% of leagues right now. He's hitting 360 to start the year with a 400 OBP and an 1144 OPS. He's got two homers on the season, and Davis is a guy that always has power. He's only 31 years old, so he's still in his prime. He's coming off a mediocre year, and he's been kind of a mediocre-ish player. But one thing about J.D. Davis is he usually has a couple hot streaks here and there within a season going back to his Mets days. So there is a player here with potential in J.D. Davis, despite the fact he plays on an offense that's underwhelming to actually be a guy that can get you through the injuries of some of those guys that I mentioned earlier at third base, maybe get you through to Memorial Day possibly, and then when Lewis or Young come back, you are good to go the rest of the season. So again, he's a cheap guy. You could probably throw a couple bucks on and add him because he plays for the A's, and nobody wants Oakland A's right now, but there's also long-term potential. If he has a really good season, who knows? He could find himself somewhere else helping out a contender at some point. So in deeper leagues, he's a guy that might be worth a stash regardless. So add J.D. Davis. Hopefully he can help all of your third base woes, at least for the time being in 2024 as we've kicked off the season. There you have it, everybody. Those are the names that I want to add in week two. But who do you want to add in week two? Drop your comments below and you just might win yourself that Trophy Smack Fantasy Baseball Trophy. It's glorious. It's from Trophy Smack. It's 36 inches, so it'll annoy everybody in your house when you put it out there, when family and friends come over. And again, to win, just subscribe to the channel, Fantasy Pros MLB. Ring that bell for notifications and drop your comments below on the videos. That's how we like to do it around here. Giving you free advice, giving you free trophies. That's what Fantasy Pros MLB is all about. All right, everybody, that'll do it for me in week two. I'm Joey P. We'll see you next time, kids.